In the depths of the financial crisis, central banks around the world embarked on an unprecedented course of monetary policy. To keep interest rates low and provide economic stimulus, they engaged in large-scale asset purchases, resulting in a massive expansion of their balance sheets. QE is like fire fighting. It is emergency measure. Without emergency measure, the fire could have been spread out to other sectors. The hope was that doing so would contain the crisis and prevent a sustained worldwide economic collapse. It worked. With low interest rates and abundant liquidity, global GDP rebounded, and investor appetite for risky assets such as global equities increased. But success came with a price tag in the form of excess liquidity, potential market distortions, and hot money flows. In other words, getting out of quantitative easing is going to be a lot harder than getting in. The question is, are there spillover effects from QE that make it, from a cost-benefit basis, not as attractive as one might want it to be? The unconventional monetary policy and QE uh, put uh, excessive liquidity around the world. Uh, which did have the impact of um, inducing um, much more external borrowing than uh, should have taken place in many of the emerging market economies. How do you reduce your dependence on QEs? We're in uncharted territory there too, and I think they're going to have to be very careful. They're going to have to do it in a very uh, measured, sound fashion. From, from our point of view, um, we actually want normalization as quickly as possible a very orderly and gradual transition back to a, norm, a more normal US monetary policy. With uh, a low in, uh, interest rate environment uh, for a very extended period of time uh, and with ample liquidity uh, moving around the globe, there is a risk uh, that um, um, market participants take too much risk um, uh, and uh, that we might see a correction um, earlier rather than later. Uh, we see the market making capacity of many institutions limited by regulatory changes. So I think we're going to have less liquidity and a lot more volatility. Most emerging markets have already developed enough buffer and immune system to deal with the tapering of, uh, of QE. Uh, except for maybe a handful, of two or three economies which are in trouble. Uh, China is now basically immune from many of the implications of the QE tapering. Now, there are real questions about countries like Turkey, which have elections, India, which has elections, Brazil, which has elections. So it's not only the economic fundamentals, it's the political economy which will overhang many of these countries. The central banks have expanded uh, or extended uh, their mandate. This is in particular true for the ECB, uh, which has um, extended its mandate to, um, um, the, um, to play a role as a lender of last resort for governments but also to, be, to play a more important role in the context of financial stability. Uh, this is a risky endeavor. The responsibilities between finance ministries or treasuries on the one hand and um, uh, the central banks have been blurred. We have to get back uh, to a clear uh, separation of, um, uh, of responsibilities. I think tapering will help because it will make for more normal capital markets and you'll get policy rates uh, beginning to rise but not in a dramatic way and longer term uh, capital markets will respond to that. It's more stability of expectations and a smooth transition process. I think uh, the Bank of Japan will check uh, uh, both downside and upside risk and uh, risks regarding the situation of the economy and the prices and uh, uh, coordinate policies if necessary because these central banks have policies which have uh, impact far beyond their borders. So further coordination is very important. I think we still need to learn much more about international monetary coordination which, and not enough has happened on that. As we know, these banking systems are interrelated. If there's a problem with one country's financial markets, it affects others. So they all have an interest in doing the right thing at home and they all have an interest in working with one another because the system is so uh, vulnerable to a mistake in one country adversely affecting other countries.